Hi guys, welcome to Photoix. Uh, Tom here. Uh, I said in my video yesterday that we were hoping that Nikon were going to release the D800 today and uh, woke up this morning to find they had. Um, I've got the specs list here. Um, obviously I've only got what Nikon have released. Um, but I'll just quickly go through the specs and what I think about the, uh, the idea of the D800. Okay, so as I thought yesterday, it's a a really big sensor on this one. It's a 36 megapixel um, FX sensor, so full frame. Now, uh, Nikon in the past have sort of kept sensible with their megapixel counts. Um, it's usually Canon that started to sort of go up and up. But for some reason, Nikon have decided this time to really go out there and stick 36 megapixels on their sensor. Now for uh, landscape photographers and studio photographers, that's probably great. You get that extra resolution, that extra detail. Um, but for your sort of general uh, amateur sort of, uh, like me, basically, um, I've got the D700 now, so I'm an amateur, but I buy the best equipment I can. For someone like that now, the D800 is probably just that step too far. I mean, uh, 36 megapixel files, um, if you're shooting in RAW, are gonna be massive. Um, you're going to need a lot of hard drive space to store all this stuff. But anyway, I'll get on to sort of what I think later. Um, the ISO is now uh, 100 to 6400, so it's about the same. Uh, but it is expandable to 50, low 1, and up to uh, 25,600, high plus 2. Um, I would imagine we can expect pretty good high ISO performance from this camera, um, judging by what I've seen from the D4. Hopefully uh, the D800 will be pretty much on par with that. And there's several crop modes in the D800 as well. There's a professional 5 to 4 ratio, um, which gives you a 6144 by uh, 4912 large image. Um, there's a Canon emulation mode, which is interesting, which is like a 1.2 crop. And there is the traditional DX mode, um, which brings the camera down to 15.4 megapixels. So even on the DX crop mode, you've still got a massive sensor there. So that's pretty cool. Um, the autofocus stays at 51 points. Uh, 15 across type, and uh, 9 will work at f8. So that's pretty good. Uh, it's got the same uh, cam 3500 FX autofocus sensor is the D3X has got and it's got micro adjust as you would expect. Um, one of the really good points for me is the viewfinder uh, in the D800 it's going to be 100% coverage as opposed to the D700 which is about 95 I think so that's really good and there's some other little bits as well we've got an electronic horizon sort of virtual horizon to show you if the camera's straight that's supposedly better than the D3X has got. Uh, the meter is a new meter. It's a 91,000 uh, pixel 3D color matrix meter with advanced scene recognition and face recognition. Um, so that's good if you're like a portrait photographer. You've now got face recognition on there. And you've also got ITTR flash metering for all the latest flash guns. And you've got your usual spot metering, your center weighted metering. And also, you've now got an in-camera high dynamic range capture mode. Um, so you can do HDR images actually in the camera. Uh, it's got a built-in flash, uh, same as the D700. So that's good if you want to fire off uh, slaves. Uh, the shutter, it's got a new shutter, um, tested to 200,000 cycles. So you could say that's its shutter life. Obviously, it can do more than that. Uh, the shutter goes down to one eight thousandths of a second, so that's pretty fast. And you've got bulb mode, and the flash sync is still one two fiftieth of a second, which is a bit disappointing. They could have done a bit better than that, I would have thought. There we go. Frame rates. Uh, the D700 was never a speed demon as it was. I can't remember exactly what I think is about five frames per second that does without the grip. Um, the D800 is only four frames per second in FX mode or five frames per second in DX mode or six frames per second in DX mode with the optional battery grip. Um, obviously this camera is not aimed at sports um, 
the high sensor megapixel count tells you that much, but four frames per second is pretty slow to be honest. Um, I'm not impressed with that particularly. Uh, we've got live view again. Uh, video, this is a lot of people have been waiting for. Um, people who've got the D700 or were looking at buying the D700 waiting for this. Um, you've now got FX and DX video, um, 1080, uh, 29, uh, sorry, 30 frames per second or 25 frames per second. Um, there's loads of different options there. Like I've always said before, I'm not really into video that much, so I don't understand it all. Um, there's a time lapse mode from one frame per second to about one frame every half an hour, so that's really good. If your time lapses are getting really popular now, so uh, you can actually do that in the camera. Uh, records to the uh, H.264 MPEG-4 file, and you can shoot up to 29 minutes and 59 seconds per clip at normal quality. And also, which is pretty cool, you can uh, live stream your uncompressed files directly to uh, an HDMI port. So you can live stream your uncompressed raw files, uh, video files to your TV or computer. That's pretty good. Um, it's got a built-in mono microphone and it's also got a 3.5 millimeter stereo jack so you can have an external microphone. And it's got uh, manual recording gain control and output gain control. And it's also got a headphone jack so you can actually monitor your own sound which is really good for people into video. Um, we've got a 3.2 inch 921,000 dot LCD. Um, it's got auto brightness control on it, probably a bit gimmicky. Um, we've got a USB 3 now on there, which is good, and HDMI as normal. Uh, we've got optional WT4 wireless and Ethernet, so that's an external thing that we've always had. Um, storage. On the D4, they've got that new funny card, I forget what it's called, um, and compact flash. On the D800, we've got one compact flash card and one SD card slot. So that's a, a sort of bit more useful because these new cards are not even released yet. So uh, that's good. Uh, the battery is the same as the D7000, the EN EL15. So that's handy if you've already got D7000. Now the weight of the D800 is actually supposedly about 10% less than the D700. So I don't know if it's going to be smaller or if they've just sort of trimmed bits off. It is magnesium alloy uh, body, so it should be as tough as the D700 is. Um, but the D800 with the battery and an SD card uh, weighs um, about 1,000 grams. So that's 35.3 ounces, I think roughly. Now the price, um, the only price specs I've got at the moment are in dollars, obviously I'm in the UK, but the retail estimate price in dollars is $2,999.95. So in my head, roughly that's probably about uh, £2,700, something like that, I think. That's a lot of money. Um, it's a lot more than the D700 was when that was released. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Uh, what else have we got here? It's promised um, late March 2012, so it should be shipping around the end of March. Uh, one thing that they've kind of slipped in on the slide is actually two versions of the D800. And there's a normal one, which I've just told you about, and there's the D800E. It's exactly the same as the other one, except it does not have the uh, AA filter. Okay. <laughs>